Pokemon cards! Pokemon cards are probably the most fascinating piece of merchandise ever created. They're shiny pieces of cardboard with one simple motive. To be played in the official Pokemon card game rule set. But no one plays that sh**. You see, Pokemon cards have nigh infinite potential. The power these pieces of cardboard contain is orgasmic. Did I just get turned on by Pokemon cards? Over the last 20 years, Pokemon cards evolved from a simple card game to potential investment properties that can make you millions of dollars. Was that a bit of a stretch? Oh, definitely. But do people really believe they can make millions of bucks off Pokemon cards? Yeah. But here's a question for you. Can you make millions of dollars off Pokemon cards? <laughs> No. Pokemon cards were originally intended to be a simple card game where you would make a deck of 60 and challenge other people and prove yourself to be the most powerful Pokemon trainer in the world. The cards were perfect for both the fans of the series and those who wanted to play the card game with all their favorite little guys on it. My favorite is Torkoal. He's a fire turtle. It was the perfect way for the Pokemon company to make a few million dollars off the power of nostalgia. And with the Pokemon epidemic ravaging the world in the late 1990s, everyone wanted a piece of the Pokemon pie. They wanted to eat Pokemon, dress as Pokemon, Pokemon. Play with Pokemon. Do Pokemon. It was an interesting time to be alive, even though I wasn't. And after a few years, people just stopped giving a shit about Pokemon. And the Pokemon epidemic just teeter danced away. That's a really good Poke pun. And from 2003 to 2019, no one really gave a shit about Pokemon cards. Sets were released in 2014 and were still being sold in 2017. Packs were everywhere, new sets were released and no one cared anymore. And Pokemon was no longer cool. Why am I about to start crying? The light at the end of the dark cave seemed Dim. But then, on a fateful day in 2020, something moronic happened. An incredibly rich YouTuber decided to buy and open up the most expensive Pokemon set in the world, changing the fate of Pokemon cards forever. And by forever, I mean two years, because that shit faded fast. But from 2020 to early 2022, the Pokemon craze was back and bigger than ever. People began their deep dives into the fascinating world of Pokemon card collecting. What a bunch of nerds. YouTubers, rappers, the hooker on the street you always say hi to because you never know when times will get tough. Everyone was interested in Pokemon cards. Everyone rushed to Target scurrying for anything they could find. Booster boxes, booster packs, anything with the Pokemon logo was being gobbled up for the sake of reselling. This was called the Poke Dark Ages. Really? And during this period arose a pair of Pokemon enthusiasts who wanted to change Pokemon collecting forever. They were known as investors and resellers. Resellers taught you how to make money in the short run, while Pokemon investors taught you how to make money in the long run. And both of them had one simple goal, to steal from kids, lie to adults, and hoarded a ton of Pokemon products, limiting it for anyone to enjoy. These two Poke rats wanted to destroy the Pokemon card world and make a profit out of it. And then the Pokemon company popped out of their little hole, said, fuck it, we ball and released a formal letter to the community saying we're gonna start printing to demand now and with one formal letter the Pokemon company murdered the reseller scene in one fell mega punch I'm on fire with these pokey puns sets were printed to demand boxes were everywhere and product was readily available for anyone to purchase it was amazing and everyone was happy but not all good things last forever you see when the Pokemon company decided to print more product they kind of overshot their load by a light year every set that came out in the last two years was overprinted and because of the overprinting the quality of the cards had diminished this caused less people to be interested in cards and with less people interested in cards there's less people in the community and with less people in the community there's less people buying products and with less people buying product the price of sets is even less and that's where we currently are in the Pokemon timeline so why is this timeline about Pokemon cards so important it's to warn you about the potential dangers of Pokemon card collecting and Pokemon investing Pokemon cards are not really something you can make a lot of money off of and as someone who's been doing extensive research for the last 10 years, Pokemon card prices don't make any sense. At one minute, they could be worth 10 to $20, the next two to $3. The price of sets and price of cards are always going up and down randomly with no jurisdiction. Of course, you can make a lot of money off Pokemon cards, but all of them is either scummy or a gamble that I wouldn't want you to take. But if you're interested in Pokemon collecting because you really like shiny card work, then the hobby is perfect for you. But if you're trying to make money, good luck, buddy. This is not where you would do it. I hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you did. More Pokemon content coming your way and good luck on all your polls because you're gonna need them. And please don't steal from kids.